Let us be able to see another day. We pray to Heavenly Father as we begin this meeting that it would be meaningful and successful. We pray to Heavenly Father that we are concerned about our community. We're concerned about the people that live here in Lake City. Bless them, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I apologize for not having a flag this morning. <laughs> In the absence of our city clerk, Ms. Marsha, please do keep her in your prayers. She has been sick um, all week long, but we're going to ask Administrative Assistant Latoya Miller to poll the council members. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Next on the agenda, I'm gonna ask for a motion to uh, for adoption of the agenda, please. It has been properly moved and second. Any questions about the agenda? If none, all in favor, show of hands, council. Thank you. Next, we're going to move, move to the fun stuff now. And I'm gonna pass it on to City Administrator Mr. Hall, Administrator's Budget Presentation for the fiscal year 2024-2025. Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Saturday, March 23rd. Thank you for being here. I'm sure we all have plenty of things to do other than to sit and look at a bunch of numbers today. Uh, but I do appreciate uh, you being here, showing your dedication for this community. Uh, the staff has worked very diligently uh, to put this together and to bring this presentation to you so we can move forward. Uh, for a new year. So I will begin with an overview of the budget. Let me get it brought back up. All right. Now, this is a new environment for us. We usually have this presentation at the Senior Center. Uh, I apologize for any problems we may have with the audio and the visual. It's everybody's first time here in the building to do this presentation. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started. What's going on? All right, Joel, I've lost everything. Lost everything. Because it keeps going back. It goes to the other area. All right. All right, here we go. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, July 1st, 2024 through June 30, 2025, proposed budget. We are at the end. It sure is. Hold on. Yeah, but it should be. Hold on. All right, let me get this brought back up, slideshow. Bottom right down here. All right, let's see. 
There we go. We're at the very beginning now. Uh, in this budget, first thing we looked at were employee increases. Uh, realistically, we looked at various uh, percentages, but the most achievable one would be 3%. Uh, we we want to try to take care of our city and staff because they are the most important asset we have. I think they're doing a very good job in keeping the city running, keeping the city clean, and making progress in doing repairs and expanding and changing out water and sewer lines and the wastewater treatment plant. So we are going to request a 3% increase for all employees. Uh, the, the city is successfully operating the solid waste department, we're collecting our own garbage. We're going into the third year of this. And at this point, and when you see in the numbers, we're still below the contract of which we were paying AWS, which was $2.5 million a year. Uh, we are still way below that. We have not hit the number one million uh, in that area yet. The city has now reduced its sludge re removal cost. Uh, we are currently removing our own sludge and with the upgrades that we've done to the wastewater treatment plant, we have seen a decrease in the amount of sludge that we're taking uh, to Lee County. And we're no longer paying the Republic service. And just at the base price that we were when we canceled the contract in 15 years, the city will save almost $2 million. Uh, the, the, police, the police department at Artfields, you will see a bike patrol and art fields and we're going to see more of the police feet and bikes on the road so they'll be more visible in the downtown and the community areas than just riding around in the cars uh, to get that bike patrol up and running they had to go to a class they actually finished that class in Myrtle Beach on Friday all three graduated and during art fields you will see bikes in the community uh, the wastewater treatment plant uh, La Porsche has been out there forever uh, 25 plus years we now have someone training under her because there's a lot of information to absorb uh, so we now have her an assistant working with her to run the wastewater treatment lab and if I'm not mistaken next week they will do the final inspection and give a CO if it passes that final inspection to move back into the renovated building and the new lab that has been erected at the wastewater treatment plant uh, property. Um, we have, with the PIO office, we are engaging the community more. Uh, we will keep putting more information out. We're getting our information to the news, um, not just the good, the bad, but everything that happens in the city of Lake City. So our PIO office is operating at 106 East Main Street. Uh, they have uh, Studio 106, which is a broadcast that they do every other month. Uh, so they're trying to keep the city and the community informed as much as possible with what's going on. Uh, we are now broadcasting through that PIO office, our, our council meetings through Facebook Live. Uh, and anytime the city council comes together as a meeting, uh, we are putting that data out on Facebook. Um, Theater Park, if you've been down Main Street uh, this year, you voted in uh, for part of the capital. Uh, expenditure a new sign on theater park that sign is now up and we've got it programmed for city events and city uh, items that's happening in the city right now uh, we will be presenting to mayor and council policies and procedures for that sign and rate structure for that sign and we will also be offering uh, that sign for um, advertising for local businesses uh, to have a revenue stream coming in uh, for that piece of uh, equipment that we have at Theater Park on Main Street. If you've not gone down Main Street and seen the sign, it, it's very attractive. Uh, it's very bold and uh, it's very lively. It, it, it accents that building quite nicely. Um, employees recognition. Last year we recognized the 5, 10, 15, 20 year plus employees. I've worked in the budget that we will do the same thing this year. A monetary uh, contribution to them and a plaque recognizing their years of service. I think to show the employees our appreciation for their tenure here is a good thing to encourage them not to go looking elsewhere because also in reality with what we've done to increase their salaries to compete with the marketplace today um, as a whole I'm not hearing a lot of griping about salaries and pay. Everybody wishes they can make more, but as a whole, I feel the staff 
is pretty happy with the way they have and what we offer them uh, to show our appreciation. So any questions on this? So we're going to go right into the payroll. Like I stated, we proposed a 3% increase across the board other than government because government is set with a ordinance to votes. So if we're looking here, the very last column shows where we spend the bulk of the money at. Right here shows the dollar amount. This column right here will show the staff in each area, part-time, full-time, and part-time. We also have the 1% payout, December holiday pay. Um, we have that set, and it's uh, 17 holidays this year. And then the total for the very salaried items. So if we look, the bulk of our salary is in the police department. And as you remember, we could not get our staff in the police department up to where we needed it at, so Mayor and Council voted a dramatic change in their salary structure. We put that in place. You also voted to, to uh, in the capital to replace their cars. We put that in place. The final cars are being outfitted with the, uh, uh, the equipment needed to put on the street, and so we have new cars for the police department, a new salary structure, and we are uh, too short of being 100% staffed on the police force, but it's costing the city 30.51% of the budget. And then the fire department comes in next at 11.19. So this last column is actually the, the usage of the budget per department. Any questions? All right, as a total on the salaries, salary I consider uh, the general salary funds, the 1% payout, the holiday payout is what makes up the bulk of the salaries. The general fund, $4 million, three. So the 1% payout for everybody general that's not in the water and sewer area is 48. The holiday pays 341, a total of 4780000 million. And the general fund as a total of the budget is 79%. The water department, uh, 313.3. 1% payouts, 3,007. Holiday pay, 23,4. A total of 340,000. That's 5.6% of the budget. The sewer department, we have 840,000. Sewer department consists of sewer line maintenance, I and I, the wastewater treatment plant. So we have a lot more going on in sewer than we do water. Uh, the 1% payout is 10,000. Uh, the holiday pays 61, a total of 911,000. 911, That's 15% of the budget. So if we come down to the bottom line here, just in those areas, we've got 6 million, 32,000. 5 million, 5 in salary, 62,000 in 1% payout, and 425,000 in salary, I mean, in a holiday. Any questions? All right, payroll, other expenses that are on the back side that aren't attributed to a direct paycheck to the individuals that the city absorbs the cost. Anytime we hire an employee, then the city has a retirement, FICA, workman's comp, tort liability, and then the insurance that goes along with that staff member to have them here at the city of Lake City. The city staff doesn't see this amount, but we have to pay it out on behalf of that employee. So in the general fund, our total amount we pay out on fringe benefits is two million eight. Of that, one million ninety-seven thousand is insurance. The retirement is nine hundred ninety-one thousand. Now what will happen is we we got it increased, but if they find out during the year that they are their surplus cash is higher than what they had anticipated. They will go back and prorate it and issue us a refund. We will then receive that refund back against the retirement account. But as a whole, we are still obligated to pay the higher um, retirement. And the police department is, and the fire department, public safety is much higher than the general fund, the general employees. So that's where we stand as a total for fringe benefits, three million five sixty-five. Right now, the insurance, the life insurance, the dental, the vision, the medical insurance, and so forth, is at one million four twenty-eight. 
Now we're educating our employees who hit 65. They're eligible for Medicare. Medicare, and, we, and then we pay the bill for Medicare. We also pay for their supplement, but it's much cheaper than paying the general insurance. We're educating our employees the difference between what we offer as Blue Cross Blue Shield and what Medicare offers. Because Medicare and with our supplement, out of pocket, it's like under $300 a year. Blue Cross Blue Shield out of pocket is $6,600 a year. So there's a big difference in that gap of out of pocket expense. But once you hit, I think it's actually 240 or 280 in Medicare, once you hit that number, you owe nothing else until the next year. So we're educating our employees. We can't make them go to Medicare, but we are educating them on the difference between Medicare and the Blue Cross Blue Shield. Because in reality, they would get a better deal on the Medicare policy. And then we would be reduced cost for that employee when we pay out for insurance, but we're still obligated to pay that insurance bill. Yes, ma'am? They need to, when they go, they're instruct, when, when they hit 65, we hook them up with Rick Woodard, who is our insurance broker. They go, and I just went through the whole process. They asked for Medicare Part B. They said, but you're employed. They said, well, we won't off our insurance. We want our Medicare. Medicare cannot keep us off of Medicare once we hit 65. Now, they're going to offer you A, but they need to specifically ask for A and B. And once that B's in place and Rick gets your number, he then will sign you up for the supplemental uh, pharmacy and the supplemental Blue Cross. And at the end of the day, it costs $240, $280 out of pocket. So it's much better than paying $6,600 out of pocket. So we have some that didn't realize that, and we've educated them more on it. Now they're going back and trying to get that B part put in place. Because it's more beneficial to the employees. Any other questions? Yes, yes ma'am. No, I'm a diabetic. So I encourage anybody who got anything such as diabetes like me to take exactly what you got uh, because offering them because uh, my deductible is $8,000, okay? And your medicine increase and everything. I need to be working at the city. All right, we're moving on. All right, so any questions on this? All right, the next page that we're going to uh, go over are the head counts by department. Um, administration, we went down one. Uh, finance, we're at nine. Uh, public information, we went up one. Uh, police department, we're at, we're at 40 because we last year we said we were going to increase the count on heads. We, hired, we gave them two more staff members, so now they're at 40. And that's a total. We also increased with the four additional people that we opened back up the lobby 24-7. Before July 1st, when people would go to that door, it was locked. The lights were out. They had nowhere to go. They, didn't, they would sit there until the doors opened the next morning at 8 o'clock. Now we have the doors open 24-7. They can come in to speak to the person at the counter, and they can get some guidance. Do they need to go to the sheriff's office or to someone from the police department can help them? So we have someone in that telephone response room 24-7 to assist anybody that walks in that lobby. And they are behind a, a bulletproof glass. They are in locked quarters, so they are safe. And the police officers are checking. Uh, the, the sergeant is checking on them on a regular basis to make sure everything's okay. But we have someone to assist anybody that comes to that police door any hour of the day or night. Judicial, uh, we, we, we're going to three. And, and we dropped the one, time, one part time. Uh, the fire, uh, fire department, we're holding still at 14, but I think they still have the part-time people that do on-call and stuff as that. Uh, public works, utilities, uh, we have 10 full-time, 2 part-time. Solid waste, the garbage area, we have 7 full-time. Uh, code enforcement, we have 3 that we're allocated for. Recreation, we have 5, 2 part-time. The senior center, we have 1 full-time. Uh, the water sewer administration building area, we have eight full-time. 
the water sewer line maintenance, we have 14 full-time. Uh, the waste water department, we have seven full-time and two part-time. The inflow and infiltration is one full-time. Now, I will say in the wastewater treatment plant, we have to make sure that who we have working there has the proper credentials and licensing to be able to operate the wastewater treatment plant. That's important because if not, we could lose our license and certification to operate that plant. Ricky is fully uh, licensed to, in water and sewer, and we're working on some other people out there that are partially licensed in both sides to make sure everybody's on the same page and has the same licensing. So we're encouraging the education and we're encouraging them to sit for the exams so they can get their, their certification and get their license on the water and the sewer side. Any questions? All right, insurance. We pay 100% the cost for employee insurance. Right now, the estimate for our insurance is $790 a head per month. That's an estimate. And we may even hit $800. Where at this point, we can now see our claims where in the past we could not see the claims. We just had to go by what Blue Cross Blue Shield gave to us. Uh, Rick is now looking at those claims to see if he has any way to reduce this cost that they're projecting for us to be at next year. I do know that based on the premiums that we paid into Blue Cross Blue Shield, our expenses were $498,000 above the premiums we paid in. So that at that point says we're going to get an increase in our insurance. Then we have our life insurance per employee. The base average is $795. Mutual of Omaha, the base is $795. A mutual of Omaha life is $4737. Uh, and the CNS, which is our dental and vision, is $2610 per employee. And at this point, the city still pays 40% of family and child care in insurance. We contribute that, and we, I think we have more this time than we've ever had in the past, taking advantage of that 40% discount on their insurance that the city absorbs that cost. So with that being said, do you remember the last number we looked at? It's $1.4 million. At some point, we're going to either have to make a decision on how we're going to handle our insurance, uh, look at self-insured. Uh, Rick has now gotten, gotten the, the county uh, contract, and they're going to a self-insured uh, policy for their 1,400 staff members. Uh, they're going to be going self-insured as soon as he gets everybody enrolled. Uh, Rick made the statement that maybe we could piggyback on their self-insurance and go in that direction and hopefully would cut our plan costs down. But at this point, we're at 1.4. I think two years ago, we weren't at a million yet, but it just health care keeps climbing and climbing. It's either we find some other way of health care to offer to our staff or, I hate to say it, Staff needs to start contributing something out of every paycheck, $25, $30 out of every paycheck to help pay the bill. Uh, because health care is, is cost is outgrowing what the city can afford. But we're looking at any avenue we can to keep from passing that cost or any part of that cost on to the staff because that is a benefit that we offer to them and have offered to them uh, all these years free of charge. Any questions? All right, the next slide we have here is the revenue slide. It's showing where our revenue was last year uh, and where the revenue is going to be projected at it this year. Um, and, and we're broken up by categories. Uh, city taxes, that's property, that's the um, uh, homeowner's taxes, the car taxes, business taxes, excuse me, uh, state taxes, business license, uh, the city income, other income, recreation, uh, the police, sanitation, um, interest in lieu of, and all other income. So in city taxes, we're projecting an increase of 435000 City taxes, uh, state taxes, we're projecting an increase of 1.5. Uh, business license, we're projecting an increase of 190000 uh, city income, 56, other income, anything that doesn't fall into those categories or liquidation of city property, 
uh, uh, we're, we're projecting in at 74 increase. Recreation, Cynthia has in, 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 in informed me that her participation in her programs have increased. So we did a little increase in recreation of 7,500. Uh, the judicial and police department uh, income coming in, which is police fines that they charge in, in the judges area, we kept flat uh, because right now we are seeing an increase of tickets because we now have almost a full staff in the police department, but we were short last year because we did not have the staff to, to, to uh, police the community like they should have. But we kept it flat this year just to see how things were going to go now that we're pretty much 100% uh, staffed. Uh, the sanitation department, a slight little increase because we have new businesses that are coming on and more people that's joining in on that program as opposed to being with um, the, um, the other company that offers the same services that we do. Um, interest income, we kept it flat even though we're seeing a little increase in our interest this year that's not guaranteed next year because those interest rates fluctuate from month to month. We kept it flat. Uh, in lieu of taxes, we kept it flat. That's uh, your, your power company, cable companies, the, the housing authority. Uh, we kept that flat and all other incomes that, that go into that uh, at 175000 Any questions? Now, this is a comparison over the three years uh, for revenue in the general fund area only. For this is a proposed revenue. Uh, so if we went back two years, our revenue was at 9.2. We went back last year, we we're proposing revenue at 10.1. This year, we're proposing revenue, revenue at 11.2. And on down into the slides, you'll see why we did an increase in the revenue this year. Um, but that's where we stand in comparison to the prior two years. So we're within the guidelines and within the range of everything and within the range of what our growth is going. Any questions? So, expenses. Salary, fringe, and other expenses. By department. These are the totals to operate. And we talked about the salary. We talked about the fringe. Now we're bringing the expenses in to operate these specific areas. It's, this is general fund only. Uh, the administration department, a total of 578000 The government and boards and all other officials, 265000 Our human resource department is now included in with the finance department. And that's at 716000 That also includes our grant department, finance department, and human resource department. Our police department, $3,400,000. Public Information Office, 279000 The Judicial Department, 285000 The Fire Department, 1364 Code Enforcement, 241000 uh, Public Works at 797000 Solid Waste, 882. We talked about that number, $2.5 million that we were paying American Waste System. Right here, we'll show you. $882,700 to do our Solid Waste Program. Big difference in what we were paying American Waste, and also we don't get the complaints that we used to. We may get phone calls during the holiday period, oh, you missed my garbage, or I didn't get it out in time, but we will go back, and we will make sure that we service it, and we make sure we take care of it. But the phone calls have completely dropped in comparison to what we used to have two years ago, or three years ago with American Waste. And we're only paying $882,700 to get it done. The airport, $41,000 is what we've got here. And I will say there is an additional, there are some grants out there to improve that property and to replace the fence. So we have calculated in a $30,000 match uh, to get a couple of hundred thousand dollars of grant funds. But I've also encouraged and challenged Doosan to come up with something that we can do out there for a revenue source. And one of the topics that came up once we got this property back in order was to offer aviation classes to the youth. So we're in the process of communicating with a place in Hartsville to open up what used to be the patio restaurant into a little classroom so we can offer aviation classes to the youth and give them an option 
or experience the opportunity to see if that's a field that they may want to go in. Uh, aviation is not something that's readily available to small communities. You find them in major metropolitan areas. These classes that are offered and, and people, that's how they become pilots. That's how they become private pilots. That's how they become commercial pilots. So I have a feeling that if we invest in this airport and we work out a deal with this uh, new company and get a revenue stream out there, I have a feeling if we offered it, we would find a few of our youth that would be interested in aviation. So I have calculated in, the staff and I have calculated in an extra $30,000 to do some improvements at the airport so we can turn that property around and not just let it sit out there and be nothing. Then we have the Recreation Department at 448,000, Senior Center 160,500. Uh, that, that number has gone up $10,000. We got an extra $10,000 last year. I went to Kevin Yoke and I said, look, we've been at $150,500 for many years. Gas, uh, electricity has gone up, utilities have gone up, insurance has gone up. So after that conversation with him, they increased it to $106,500. So that at least we got something, an additional $10,000. Plus, we are now doing our own lawn care out there. When we bid out the lawn care, um, the lowest bid was like $1,300 a month. So that was literally taking the increase and giving it to the lawn care company. So now the city is actually doing its own lawn care at the senior center. And then we have the Boys and Girls Club and the Multi-Ferries. Multi-Ferries is everything that does not fall into these individual departments like the city electricity bill, insurance, uh, contracts, and so forth and so on is at $1,752,000. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. All right, so... If we look at where we stand per percent based on everything in general fund, this bottom column says out of the revenue we're bringing in, we have to, the, the equals to the expenses, 30.28 is the police department, fire department, 12.14. There's the bulk of the expense. And that's our public safety area. Finance, uh, we have the uh, administration at 5%, the government at 2%, human resources, we are going to um, zero, there's nothing there. Finance at 6%, public information office is 2%, the judicial department is 2%, code enforcement at 2%, public works at 7%, solid waste at 7%, airport. It's not even a percent, even after increasing that to 41, uh, with that additional $30,000. A recreation is 3.9, the senior center 1.4, a boys and girls club 0 0.6, 0 0.1, uh, and the multi fares is 15%. So that's right here is where we spend our money at based on department and the expenses. Any questions? So, in regards to our debt, these are the items that we have obligated ourselves to. That's the fire truck. It will pay out October 2026. This first citizen is a garbage truck. It will pay out August 2026. Enterprise leasing is gone. We now own those three police cars. That, that, that's obsolete to us now. BB&T for the capital of 2000, we'll pay that out on October 2026. First Citizen for the Street Sweeper, we'll pay that out in 2028. Uh, and then we have the new capital that y'all voted in will be paid out in 2023. But it encompasses general fund, water, and sewer. And we are already starting to set aside monthly account balances for those. So when the money's due to be paid out, we have it in the bank set aside. Uh, we allocate that to this every month to pay that bill. Any questions? What's the life expectancy of a police car? Uh, five to seven years. Any other questions? All right. In reality, y'all, the Mayor and Council has been so gracious in the past 
of giving capital to the city to bring their equipment and units up to date because some of them were on their last leg. Our police fleet was on their last leg. Our, our utility area was on their last leg. This year, we're asking for the recreation department to get a pickup truck because I think she actually has two trucks that pretty much are on their last legs. <clears throat> and the water sewer line maintenance area, a pickup truck. That's about $110,000, and we have the money. We'll have the money set aside to pay that out of the funds. We're also looking at Lincoln Avenue. When we went through and you gave me streets that you wanted to be addressed and paved, we had three streets that belonged to the city. Lincoln Avenue needs new water lines, new sewer lines, and we also need to work on the storm drain there. So we're going to get an estimate. We've requested those estimates uh, to come through, but we're going to redo all of Lincoln Avenue. So I figured if we take one little bite at a time, then next year we can look at another one, and next year at another one. But at least we start making progress on replacing the water lines, the sewer lines, and then repaving that entire stretch of the road. Yes, ma'am? We own. We own and that we're taking consideration right now to do this project on, but I've spoken um, to State Representative Roger Kirby, so we will be looking at the state streets as well to see how we can collaborate together and look and getting these streets paved. So we are working, we are having the conversations, it's just a process, so please just be patient with us. We definitely hear you. We just need for you to be patient with us and to work with us. Thank you, Mayor. Any questions, Mayor, Council? Cedar Street is what? State. Rick, is Cedar Street a state, right? Cedar Street. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Joel was one of them, and what was the third one? And that one that's broke up between city and state? Thomas, Thomas Street. Yes. The rest of the streets that were on the list were actually state streets. Those, those streets are going to be sent forward, and like, like the mayor just said, we're going to see what we can do. But city, city tax dollars, we don't feel need to go and pave state streets. They have more money than we got. <laughs> we, they're hearing our voice. Yeah. We're, they're hearing our voice, and we've got uh, uh, um, um, Roger Kirby's ear. Uh, we were on the phone with him just the other day. Uh, he, he made it possible that... Uh, they will be working on Main Street, but they were working on Main Street during the same time that Art Fields was going on. And with the kids and all the foot traffic, we're gonna, they're going to hold off on that until after Art Fields. But they're still going to do Main Street. But then we've also said we got more streets to deal with. So, Mayor and Council, any other questions? Okay. So... In reality, and, 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 and this will close out the general fund, this budget, in reality, again, will give all full-time employees a 3% raise. It'll give all the full-time staff members a 1% December payout. Uh, it will also uh, give the $100 payout to all part-time staff members. Insurance is still paid at 100%. The public safety departments who are on shift work will be paid at 12 hour holidays, not eight hour holidays. Now the, the December and the part-time payouts will be based on if you are a full-time, if you're employed on October 1st and you're in good standings and you are actually on the, the, the time clock on October 1st and at the time of payout you're actively employed uh, to get eligible for the December payout and the $100 payout. Uh, again, the city's operating its solid waste way below what we were paying American Waste. Uh, so that was a good deal to bring those back, even though it cost us some money up front. And we are cut, we've caught the complaints and the phone calls down. Uh, the sludge at the wastewater treatment plant, we're removing that our own self. And over the 15-year period, we're now looking to save $1.5 to $2 million. And we are, if we watch our numbers carefully during the year, we are guaranteed to put money back in the fund balance every year. So in reality, that is a synopsis of the general fund.
4, 24, 25. In regards to the general fund, anybody have any questions, Mayor and Council? All right, do we want to take a break? Because the next step is the millage rate. If not, I'm going to go straight into millage rate. Right All right, thank you. All right, now, this is an example of the millage rate. And Mayor and Council, if you will look in the back of your book, there is a green. This talks about the millage rate straight from the South Carolina Department of Revenue, Florence College County. We are going in a reassessment year. So this is education tool for millage. A lot millage can be difficult, millage can be complicated, but as a as a a layman type. Thing, uh, assessed value, if you take the assessed value, not the market value, not the retail, the assessed value, for example, 30, 75000 then the only thing we tax, if you own the property, live in the property, is 4%. Your tax rate is 4%. If it's investment property, rental property, second homes, your tax rate is at 6%. So you get a better deal if you're living in the property. So our millage rate proposed for next year is 215.8. So that means based on the, the uh, 4%, we're at $647. And I think from last year, I think it might be a $30 increase from last year. Uh, when we had the budget workshop back in February at the Senior Center, I presented a letter at that point that the state DOR said the city of Lake City could go up 8% last year on our millage rate. We did not use that to go up on the millage rate. We went up on our, um, our, our fees for water sewer. We're still putting money in the reserve account for emergency repairs, new water lines, new sewer lines, replacement lines, and that's working very good. It's coming in handy. So this year I am using the increase from the DOR for this year that we didn't use last year. And the main reason why I'm using that increase is because our auditor stated, William, if you're going to continue the growth and the investment into the community improving, you need to do the millage rate because the fund balance is depleting, covering these new projects that we have going on. She also stated the city has never been in a role such as this before of improvement and advancement and development. So we use the 8% uh, to add to the millage rate. Any questions? Now that's an example. This is where the millage rate's standing. Millage rate in the general fund is 188.34. Uh, we had debt service recovery of 27.46, which was voted in uh, two years ago, and I think we have another three or four years, I'd have to look at that date. Uh, the total millage rate that we'll send to the county to charge is 215.8. Last year it was 205.8. So in reality, we budgeted, oh, it went the wrong way. In reality, we budgeted two million eight at a millage rate of 215.8. One mill will cost us $129.74. That's to operate the budget for 24-25. Any questions, Mayor and Council? Now, Mayor and Council, we set up uh, last year, year before that, $2,000 on each of your areas. These were suggestions that we put out last year to use those funds. We're putting the same suggestions up again this year. And in your book, there's two pages, your suggestions and topics. Yeah, so you have two pages. These are just suggestions. Just like the city council did. Okay. Um, just the same thing that we had last year, um, like William stated, is there any changes or anything that you would like to add or suggest that we do um, so we can utilize these um, funds in our, in our districts or within our community? Um, please just let us know so we can get a more structure and more utilization of our funds. Yes. Some was used. Mm -hmm. And so. we still have another three months to go. 
Right. April, May, and June. You do not know your balance. You can definitely come to the administration building and know your balance of your funding that, of what you did not use yet. Because, like William said, we still have what three months? Three months. In this April, fiscal May, and year June. to use your funds, and then it starts over in the fiscal year of next year. No, ma'am. It does not. So. That is uh, the end of general fund. We're going to take a break here, and then we're going to go into utility service, and hopefully uh, we will be out of here before noon. Anybody have an objection? Mayor, you want to call for a break? Yes. Uh, does everyone agree to having a break right now? Maybe about 10, 15 minutes? Council? Yay? I don't think any nays. Thank you. Thank you.
And we put together a little something for you here this morning. I'll try to make it quick. So, uh, last year. Uh, and again, we're only touching on some of the hot topics or some of the bigger items. And uh, of course, there was a lot more. And we can uh, go into a, a deep dive on that. Our current technology, future technology. We want to talk about something that a lot of cities and towns are, are dealing with right now. Um, and that's the license plate readers. And you're going to hear that word LPR for short. And it's to it as in the field or in the, in the industry as LPR, as license plate, re li license plate readers. Uh, speed warning and safety systems. We're going to in the city and how they can help to make your, your towns and cities safer and, uh, and what they can do for you. Um, and then finally, we'll just do some quick questions and, and a Q&A, anything you'd like to ask. Um, certainly feel free to ask at, at any time during the presentation if you've got a question. of 140 users for the city of Lake City. And in that, we service your servers, your PCs, your laptops, your routers, your network, your firewalls. We do all your backups for your say software, just about everything that you touch that has software on it, we support it today. Even to the SCADA pumps that, that, that are cellular controlled at this point, we, 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 we maintain those. Asset management and updates, now this is an area that we're just starting everything about them so that we can use that as part of a, what we call the PC refresh. So we run about a, t right now we're probably running about a 10 to 15 or a refresh rate on your hardware and your software and stuff to keep you up with current technology. We would like to see that at about 25 percent, but right now we're running a percent rate on that. Any questions so far? Okay, we'll keep moving. Surveillance. tied in, I want to add, to the police department. So they can see them live as well and we can continue to monitor the city and, and, and keep it safer. It would occur, we can see it real time now and can respond to it if we need to. We've updated the body cams for all the police officers. They went with the new Motorola system. We've installed a server for them so that it has more capacity and so we can see further out in time stuff that's been recorded and used for any incident. Phone systems, we are part of helping you support all that for the city as well, and your wireless network as well as your regular. Everybody has uh, experienced that just recently. We had to change all your phones. So, um, and then we currently do your IT, all your IT policies and procedures, and we help with uh, to date with uh, your bank uh, as far as like security, and we're taking all the precautions with computers. take care of all that for you as well with sled and we'll talk about that a little bit. questions point we came over our car our car cameras and our body cameras in the police department were having issues with uploading to our server and when uh, solvent technology came over they were able to resolve that issue and because at that point we have to be sled need to be uploaded and recorded on these servers and they are kept for years uh, I don't have all the information right in front but anyway we yeah. were not able to facilitate that and we were having issues but Solvit was able to resolve that and on the other hand in Martha Law Park and some of the to put cameras and solar lighting in some of these parks to make them safer and the community we did that and we will be going and, and advancing that in more of our parks to make sure that we monitored in the police telephone response room area being open 24 7 they have the capability monitoring those city parks 24 hours a day correct yes yes that's, live that's, at all times that's we're i'm going to cover that real quick yep oh, okay go ahead yep our parks are 
we, we, there's several of the parks that we have updated, and our goal in the future is to do them all. We'll have them all covered. We'll make sure that each park has all cameras, security cameras, as well as proper lighting so that we can reduce any incidents. I know that some of the parks, and I don't know all the particulars about which park, we've seen those go down dramatically since we've installed the solar lights and, uh, and all the park cameras, and they're tied into the police department via internet now so that we can live a reactive environment and let's be proactive so that we can maybe stop something before it happens monitor it as well. Good question. If I can add, I don't want anyone Because we have these cameras, it's going to help. Absolutely. But we're still going to have the police presence patrolling yep. like they should. Great. Absolutely. That's a good point. It only just exceeds. It's more tools for them to be able to do their job better. We updated the courtroom to a new digital and video streaming system. I think most of y'all have already seen that. Um, seems to be working well. Uh, everybody's uh, happy with when we got here, where a lot of them were uncompliant. We've updated those and we're constantly adding more, again, only to make this city safe. We can go back and go, hey, well, this car did this or we saw this. Can you go see and let me know what happened? And we'll have those recordings that we use uh, instance in the city. Um, we've updated several of your servers and your PC and your network. One of our biggest Are the speeds on your internet slow? Are your PC? And I so some of them are in the, some buildings are, I think we have two left now. Joel, is that correct? Uh, the ones that have been updated are loving it. And they're saying that the, the PCs are much faster now. And, uh, and uh, 106 office, we put all new Wi Fi and door access systems. That's your PI, am I saying it right? PIO, POI, your office, public information. <laughs> Your wastewater office, new TVs, Wi-Fi, and PCs. Uh, we just did your AT&T FirstNet migration, which is exactly, I know pretty close where we're at, but I don't want to say right now, but I, we're going to be in good shape as far as not really having to pay out a lot of difference in money and, and our budget as far as uh, the AT&T and our cellular goes. Yes. Uh, AT&T FirstNet is on band now. It's part of a first responder network. Whereas uh, in Verizon, you know, you were just kind of part of a public uh, to recovery. You have a better backup in case there's an issue and your cellular goes down. If you noticed just recently, AT&T had an outage. Your the phones you had. So you're part of that as well as you have unlimited data and you have the ability to have your own family account as well. Any questions? Uh, talk about disaster recovery in case we go completely. They have committed to us to get us back up and running. Right now, if you were to completely lose a server, we can. And, and your, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, cell phones. Um, they have variety of first responder services. Let's say that you were to have an incident here um, and a building went complete, or the buildings went completely offline and you don't any internet or any uh, cellular, they have resources that they have dedicated just for the first immediately. We're talking big trucks and 18 wheelers and mobile uh, units that will, that this, their advanced response teams that will, they, they will deploy automatically out of your service that you get with AT&T at, no at no extra cost. And that is deployed. They'll have you back up and running. And that, those resources will is that you're in. That's part of their disaster recovery promise to us. Good question. Any more? Cars updated. This is a big one, um, and we still got more to go with them. There's a. We'll get a little more in, into that just a, a little bit further here, as far as uh, the 
uh, when someone scans a license plate or, or they scan on how fast we can get information. They can get information today, but we want it instantaneous. And that helps that officer be safer. That helps them know that what they're dealing with with a car that's in front of them that might be stolen or a person that might not be uh, a nice person. <laughs> and they need to know, you know, what kind of situation they're going into. So the fast And so we have updated their, their laptops and their cars to new laptops. Going to, and I'll, I'll tell you about that real quick in a minute. We've, as I've talked, network speeds have improved. We've maintained all your IT compliance with your agencies. Uh, example, try to move on here pretty quick. I don't want to run over here. And we've also all the technology to help you set up AgeCon with your state of art audio and video and lighting. Maintain all that for you too. In the future, MDIS is what's next for your police cars. This will allow your police cars, as we talked about, to have that information at their fingertips. It's going to help them. They've got it today, but we're going to make out what kind of car they've stopped or what kind of potentially uh, person or situation that they're getting into. This is, we're about 70% there. Um, the, the IDs have been created. Uh, license, if you want to call it, has to be installed in all the cars. The software has to be configured and, and up and running for each individual car. This is configured properly. Coal road implementation, this is all the technology we're going to do for that building. We've already finished the wiring. We're waiting now to, do, to decide exactly what technology is going to go in that building as far as TVs, white and so on. Increasing your security. We're, we're steadily adding cameras. We're looking at now at going with a different as we're seeing hacking is getting more and more. Data breaches are getting more and more and we are having to stay on top of that. Every how, how much that has increased, especially here in the, in the past few months. So we try to stay on that. So we use them as well. And, uh, and making sure that we're, we're talking to the right people to keep Questions? I'm sorry? Sure, sure. I, there's a good question on that just right now. I'll answer this for you right now. It's a good question. So what's to know about the license plate reader? So now we're going to Okay. This is a typical license plate reader. This is the camera. You would see it in town. It would be installed on a pole, on a street corner. You can on police cars. They make them uh, as a small unit. This is some of the information that it would display. Uh, that one particularly right now is displaying a crash. Um, this is another one. And listen, there are tons of companies that to research who's the best. We've got three or four picked out is what we would recommend to you as the top license plate again uh, provider would be for you so we've researched that and we've got you a couple of solutions which I'm going to show you here in just a minute that's a picture of your license plate it can run on sailor it can run on a uh, they've got several solutions for this and they all of course are cost uh, different amounts License plate reader, your first, and these are two big things you're going to need to remember about license plate readers. This is it's connected to the cloud, and it's connected to a database that when it swipes a license, compare to somebody or some database somewhere, and it'll say, wait a minute, this guy or this person, their license plate, this is a stolen car. You need to alert police right away. Actually, you can have it to where it pops automatically on the police's laptop while they're in on duty. It'll show, hey, you two, it's stolen, and three, it just committed a crime two hours ago. Can you imagine having that finger? People reporting right now 2,200 additional tickets a month now in some cities. These readers. So remember that. This is offline. And what I mean by offline, one, you go purchase and you own your own equipment. So Lake City will be 
copying license plates. You're recording the car, the, the, the color, the make, the license plate, the event, what happened, where was it at. It's all that. So you have that that you can use. But it is not tied into anything on a pole recording on a, like a, a video camera or a DVR, a device that records it on hard drives, and you can later go back and pull it up if you need to. pole on one corner has to have a camera that way and a camera that way. Traffic going both ways. You're going to pay about $500 estimated. I'm sorry. <laughs> I win. Guys, keep me straight. All right. And then we're also, and this is another big thing I'm going to talk to you about. We've got to really, really focus on this. There's, I just talked to um, uh, the legislation in Columbia. We're are going to get invited to be a part of that team that has the input into this new technology and install this stuff without going through the proper channels. And it is a happening up in Columbia about people not being happy because they didn't have the permits, they didn't get DOT approvals, they didn't go through the proper you from that and make sure that we do all our research. So that we're clear when we decide to do this. Patty, we will not move forward until we get a stamp of approval from the state of South Carolina, because we want to make procedure set forth by the state assembly. And the great thing about we started that. We're already in that process. I, 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 I talked to one of the senators. He's kind of driving that public safety initiative and we're really excited to hopefully be a part of that soon and and go in and provide input if nothing else and find out because my theory is is that you know we don't always i say we don't always we don't all need to make the same mistake i do not i do not i, I know the person that's driving and i can i would be glad to yes Great question. Any more? Okay. And also, there's up at our office at Solve It running right now, this offline one, that we can show anybody at any time, or we can remote in at some point where we can show you a deep dive session into these license plate readers, what you can expect, what it looks like to go back and look at an incident. And, and we've got it, we can shut up, uh, set up and show, we went ahead and purchased that so that we could show it to our customers. So they, you can make sure you're buying the right thing. I want it to be something. Next line, this is the other one, option B. This is, uh, there's several companies out there doing this right now, and again, but we've got to cover this first. Then we can kind of decide which way we want to go, but um, this is something you need to think about. Option B, so far you don't own the equipment it's very expensive per camera you pay for it, so you never actually own it but you are tied into a database that got a potential issue coming into your city you need to let your police address it okay moving on it's connected on $2,500 per camera per year so I said it was expensive. That does not include the install. The install is separate. Um, the rates I've been seeing is it runs anywhere. Install it. Then you're going to pay. And, you, you know, we made a couple of lives. Our life was worth $2,500 a year, you know, in my book. But that's something, that's, the, that's what we've got to decide. Your, your overall picture there is what, what, what direction go. Still, we're dealing with the same uh, Department of Transportation permits and legal There's demos available for them as well. Really, the only two big differences you're going to see between these two is you don't own your equipment. You're going to pay it. Every, you pay for it every year annually. The good thing about it is they do all the So it's an all-in-one package. But the one thing about that one is you, if something comes this you will not unless we figure out a way to tie it in. And I believe it'll all get to this point at some point anyway, because 
you know, the advantage is having this so that you can. You know, like, hey, we've got a car that's stolen coming into town. We need to go address that right away. Questions? Well, the technology, or it was introduced to us at the Columbia, and I know a few of you had made uh, inquiries. This is why we brought this to the table. So anybody in council have questions or if you want something later on, shoot me an email and we'll see what we can arrange for a demo or whatnot. But in reality, I don't think the city needs to move forward in this technology until they work it out in the state house. But it's still something to keep on the forefront and keep it to the community. Great. that even with the council member meetings, whenever you have your district meetings, this will be a great time. So working with Mr. Jeff and Mr. Joel, they can definitely make sure that you get that de demo for your meeting. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. Again, we, yes, sir. That's a really good question. It, it's going to ask, I would, and I'm going out on a limb, I think um, it's going to read the associated with. Uh, uh, if it's tied to an online database, it could potentially, and again, it could potentially match the mic and model of the car with the plate. Um, I know it captures that information. I would have to check into that more for you. I, I'm not 100% sure on that, but that's a, a great question. I'll check into that. I'll get you an answer. Just, just give me your, stop, let me get your name before we leave, I'll, I'll address that. That's a really good question. Um, any further questions? It's going to tell you what car it belongs to and the state and so forth, just basic information. This is speed now. And we're getting into speed. These will still do some of the license plate stuff. This is a capture device. It's going to capture with radar to this the box and back. It takes a picture. It actually can issue a citation. Okay. This is another area that we're going to need the legalities of and work with state representatives and make sure we've got all our permits and stuff and that we're good because this is all. I just don't really think there's any legislation around it yet and and so forth so it is a it is a revenue stream um, but we need to look at that and make sure that we're just covered legal wise well in reality is we start at some point and then we have to build the policies afterwards it's just like the internet when it came on board years ago we had no policies about hey that's right our federal government is now trying to um, Police it. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. This will do that. This will do that. Yes, this will do that. And actually, you can take this, put it on this tower, put this on that tower, and use a remote device to just pull around to different areas if you wanted to. And, and in our state government has not made policy procedures and laws in regards to this industry. Florida have those laws in place that they utilize this and they can enforce it. We not. We haven't okay. gotten right. to that point yet. Right. So we'll just need to iron all that out. Again, we're excited to be a part of that. It's out there. We just need to follow, make sure we're following the right procedures and getting it. Please, a sign that when you hit it, or you go, go bye bye, I hope you don't hit it, when you buy it, it's going to capture your speed. And if you're going faster than what's tell you, and it's going to blink bright red, slow down, slow down. 
And that helps, we found that those, that's helping a lot of areas too. This one actually carries, uh, captures your information and is gonna send you a ticket. I don't want to buy 14 of these things because they're too expensive. Put one on a trailer and we'll make it to where we can set it up somewhere and periodically. Okay? Questions on that before we move into. All right, we're almost done. Uh, so, speed radar citation system. Again, you purchase on both of these, you'll purchase it on your own equipment. It's going to. It even gets the license plate. Um, it can issue paper citations. I like to call them citations because in South Carolina we can't call them tickets. Um, about 20K for the reader and the camera. Okay, and that's uh, the camera and the, the pole mount installation is about six. By the time you add the trailer and everything, you know, it's just with the trailer, you'd be about 20 grand on the pole. If you want to be permanent or you want to be remote, that's just, that's up to you. tells you to slow down and read speed those are about 5k they start at 5k or 5,000 and it displays your speed it warns you so you will own that as well questions about speed and readers okay God bless you we appreciate all that you do for us thank you so very much Jeff we appreciate that update on IT signs and so forth um, while Jeff hooks me back up, we're going to go straight into right before you start, Mr. Hall. I just want to show my gratitude to Solve It IT, um, to Mr. Jeff, and to Mr. Joel, and very very helpful right, no, oh, um, since go. we've been with you all since you all. I really do appreciate all the help that you have given us. Delete the other two. I'll just go back. Yeah, that's right here. Where'd it go? You got it? There we go. Delete them. Yep, there you go. Now open it back. Hold up. It's not there anymore. Yep. I got it. Now. All right, sorry for the technical difficulty, but right now we're going to go into utility services. Utility revenue sources uh, that right here is the current year 324 this is the year that we're projecting out 24-25 uh, go up we have new customers coming on board uh, we have new people signing on to our system uh, we're going to go up in the water fees $25,000 return checks uh, we did an increase on and we're below the market 
So we're going to charge more for the and that will be reflected in the rate sheets that you have in the back of your book. Administration fees for new accounts, uh, reconnection fees, we kept at the same thing. Penalties, uh, we see an increase in late accounts, so we increased that a little bit. Uh, water taps, we have increased our water tap fees, account service fees, uh, the credit card fees that we implemented. Projecting that to come in at 12.5 uh, this year. Uh, miscellaneous income is flat. Tank rentals has increased uh, over last year, and all other income. So, right, increase our revenue in the water system. These are our revenue sources for the sewer. Current year we're in now, the year we're projecting out. And the differences, 218,000 in Atlanta revenue, 5,000. We see an increase in their flow. Finalizing a five year, new five year contract with them now. We met with Mayor Welch. That we are going to you know, increase by based on the city's rates. Um, the Scranton and the Coward, we have some increase in services there. So we're just but we're projecting out an increase over the current year into the new year. Questions? I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, let me just. Um, for the penalties, you said that it was an increase, so you guys are going to go up on it. Where, where are we talking about? Flip back to the. No, we okay. have, we have an increase in people paying Wait. their bills late. Okay. We have we have a policy that we will mail the blue letters out. Mm -hmm. And they're waiting to react on those blue letters right before they get their water disconnected. So they get hit. Seeing this true income on the penalties. So we're going to recognize more of that income this year. It's not increasing penalty rates. We're just going to recognize. That makes sense. All right. I just want to make sure. Any other questions? <laughs> An overview of the water and the sewer department, uh, the salary, the fringe benefits, and the areas when we, started, when we brought it up, we talked about salary uh, being the salary and the holiday and the 1% payout, fringe benefits being everything else that a, a, an associate does not see insurance and our part of the retirement that we pay on their behalf that's the fringe any expenses it costs to operate those departments the water utility billing is 40 percent sewer billing together 40 percent of that is allocated to the sewer side because that's when we do our audit that's our basis of a breakout um, on our income and our expenses. So we hold that true for the whole year. And we apply that same principle to bills, invoices, payroll. We break it 40-60. If it's totally a sewer, it's a 100% charge to the sewer department. So these are the totals to run the water areas. Any questions? All right, in summary, 984, uh, total salary for water and sewer is 1,459. The fringe benefits, again, that's everything that the employee doesn't see uh, insurance, the tort, the workman's comp, and the retirement and so forth. In the water department, it's 202. The sewer department is 529 for a total of water and sewer. One million six ninety four. The expenses to run the sewer is two million six. 
52. Now that expenses includes insurance, that includes electricity, that includes anything that's not allocated to the individual fringe and salary. And for our total, the water department will cost two million three seventy two seven fifty for twenty four twenty five. Cost four million one seventy one for a total of six million five forty three. Any questions? If we go and look at it by percent of the total of where we spend our money, sewer is a fiduciary. It's based off of the fees that we charge for the services. In reality. fees that we charge for general fund so water sewer is a profitable area and it's based off of fees and services apply uh, to the customer so at the end of the day we, we should have money that's going back that we can reinvest into the system and we've tried to do that when we did those rate so these are the ownerships of to run water and sewer. Anybody have any questions? And the most expensive one is the wastewater treatment plant. And in reality, we service the uh, for our what not just the immediate city, but all around Nanyang, Atlanta, Cowards, Granton, and all points in between. That the four point uh, million dollars that we hope uh, to get would I help them to decrease the water payment? And I was trying to explain to them that it, the purpose of that water, um, that grant is for to better our system. Um, issue we have with water and streets flooding out in the city. Which which, which grant are we speaking of, Councilmember okay, Scott? The last one The grant, that's, yeah, the, grant. the grant that we're speaking right, of right, currently, speaking of, yeah. eight million one, and we're so close. We're on the last verge of getting the award letter on that, and that's not water. That's pertaining to storm water because we have a lot of flooding, and what we're talking about in that, and we're on the. I signed. We signed something. Yet award letter for us to move forward to receive that eight point one million. We got that with some help from, from the federal government. But it will help resolve some of the flooding we have on Thomas Street, Ackline Street, and, and there's like nine or different other areas that it's. And I don't know them off the top of my head. Ricky, can you call out a few of the streets, please? Thomas. Hold on. Oh, there you go, Ricky. Use a microphone so they can hear your little <laughs> quiet voice. One at Thompson Moore, one at Thompson Ackline, one up by the Dollar General. Three different locations. It goes in three different areas. And it's there. Also, the ones that's flooding up on McAllister and Lee. Uh, also on Calhoun. All that uh, new pipe is going to be diverting that flow down back line to the swamp so in reality even though it's a 8.1 million dollar grant it's actually almost a 10 million and it's not going to happen overnight but in reality we don't normally get these size grants for these type projects so we've been very blessed and for them to give us our award letter and hopefully nothing should happen sorry That we can skip. We got so many. 13 from the federal government, 8 from skip, but neither one of them will lower the, the rates. Yeah. 8 from skip that we was awarded. 
with other municipalities in the state of South Carolina. We were one 13.1 from the it's, federal government. Yes. And 13.1 is for Ackline Street. Line, Street. storm water drain but it's not just Ackline Ackline Street. Street. it's what Ricky just called it's just out. what Ricky just said so to answer your no <laughs> <laughs> will it lower the rates no <laughs> sorry did you get all that <laughs> are any other questions We have several storm drain prob uh, issue, uh, several storm drain uh, uh, projects getting ready to start. We have one on 52 behind, all the way down 52 from what point to what point? Alleviate that one, and then then we have encompasses quite a few more on the other side and then we also have one more on the board independence so we have three different stormwater drain two of them are at the point of almost 52 is at the point of putting the shovel in the dirt we have a, a uh, community meeting April at the senior center Uh, we have a community meeting April 4th. We'll make sure we get that back out on Facebook uh, to talk about the Highway 52 storm drain project. And that project's ready to put the, the shovel in the ground. 2017. Just, just as long as the Line project, 2017. Yes, ma'am. In other words, if it costs 52 million, are we presenting 52 million and seeing what they can give us? Or are we just presenting another cost? Applied for where we're so close to the 13.1 million, we applied for 15 million. And they said no. Point blank, they, they turned us down. Well, after we reconsidered, they said, but we will do 13.1 million. What we won't, but we won't turn down what they'll give. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, you're right. We, we asked for higher. But when they came back, said, we will consider this. I said, good, thank you. That's right. More. Safeway. That's on the 52 side. Yeah. And that one already started that if, I, if we hadn't said we need to talk, we need to bring it to the community so they know y'all getting ready to be in some people's backyards. April 4th. That one's not moved forward. That is not moved forward as quickly as these two. Okay, but would it possibly open up Winkley's Drive? Because that's what I always be no. worrying about. No, not yet. But to get it done. Any other questions? All right, so moving on. Uh, these are long-term debts because usually these are underground items. Uh, rural development, rural development. Um, these payouts going to 2053, 2053, 2036, 2062. These are long meter reading system that we have, uh, which is part of the $446,800 uh, that we have. That project, uh, and I will say again, based on this uh, meter reading system that we have, and and, and everybody that's operated in that, 
uh, now that we're utilizing it to the fullest of its capability, uh, that the water department got an award uh, for the area using this new system. So it is very beneficial to us. We control the water uh, meters and cut off and cut on from the computers at the office. 280, 280 now. And as we move forward, we will be going with those type meters as opposed to using the old type meters where you have to go manually. So, in reality, well, that's pretty much everything. In the back of the and on some of these rate schedules, there are some, some dramatic increase. And I'll talk about the, with one of them being the meters. Those meters, but if they were destroying our meters, we were only charging them 250 Because that's the old meters that we don't use anymore. 750 So if they destroy our meter, we want them to pay the 750 So here's... to operate for the city of Lake City. And that's all I have for you today. Uh, I'm open for any questions. Any recommendations? Any statements? Round of applause. Thank you. Uh, staff all helped do this, so but thank you so much. We, we're here to serve the community. To support the city uh, wisely uh, and to better the city and to educate our staff to make sure that they can perform their job. Uh, thank you for being here today. Mayor? Yes. So, first, this is um, a proposed budget. The information that we received today so we, um, come before mayor and council in the council meetings and then I know we definitely will have a okay. April for the, the community to come again before to ask any questions that was said today that was presented to, at anything that was presented today so please let everyone know this information know about this information because it's there is their tax dollars to put this information out here so they will get the understanding of where their tax dollars are going there's no surprise there's nothing being hidden it's all right dollars are going I do want to take this minute to recognize that we have mayor John Mr. Williams has been here since we started this morning, so thank you for coming. Um, if you ever have any questions, um, all right. um, I thank for the community members that are here today. Um, the council members, thank you for being in attendance. Thank you, staff, for all that you do on a daily basis. Um, I thank Solvit IT. Any other comments from council or anyone else? Because I think by law, oh, we're required to put our budget out there. Okay. These are all working papers to get to the May June vote, and then that ordinance. Is all been broadcasted on Facebook. I have an opportunity to show them. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All oh, hearts and minds are clear. All right, been a motion has been second. All in favor? Amen.